and um, uh, we are now uh, are going to uh, have a, a guest spot from uh, Jan and Paul Ramsey. Jan and Paul have been joining us now for, I don't know, three months, four months, maybe longer. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to, to have them with us. Uh, their, their singing is always immaculate and the harmonies and the harmonica are just tremendous. And uh, I'm looking forward to a really slick spot tonight. Yeah, yeah don't yeah. anyone think it's going <laughs> to... We've been, we've been <laughs> the last hour and now it's going to go downhill. But hey, hey. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, gosh. My right. mouse is going Don't touch the mouse. Don't touch it. Right. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Well, we've been, as I said, we've enjoyed the last hour, but we'll try not to ruin it now. This um, first song is about a Vietnam soldier, and it was written by a guy who's in a heavy metal band. So yeah, it's our only heavy metal good. band. It's the only one. The rest are more traditional. Don't worry. Don't <laughs> metal band stain. So here, Trapping Soldier is what it's called. Okay. <laughs> Two days past fifteen, he was waiting for the bus in his army green. Sat down in a booth in a cafe there, he was ordered to a girl with a bow in her hair. She's a little star, she gave him a smile. He said, Would you mind sitting down for a while and talking to me? I'm feeling a little I'm off in an hour and I know where we can go So they went down and they sat on the pier They said, I bet you got a boyfriend but I don't care I got no one to send a letter to Would you mind if I sent one back here to you? Come back again, never more to be alone. 
long when a legend said a soldier's coming home. Thank you. This next one is more of uh, in the traditional vein. It was written by a local man, Bill Meek, who did some, uh, he wrote with John Connolly, not of Fiddler's Green fame. Uh, but it's based on, a, it's a story based on Lincolnshire folklore about, I'll try not to waffle because I do waffle, I'm sorry, right, I'll do it succinctly. There's a village in Ful called Fulbeck and it's years ago apparently, to, according to the story, it was having a really hard time with a wicked witch but luckily a soldier came riding by on this horse called Bayard and Bayard sorted out the witch for them, however the horse did die, didn't it? Spoiling the story. Didn't the I horse died, but, but anyway, but still you can see, it is said, the horse's hooves imprinted in the stone. That's, that's it basically. Yeah. I will shut up. Are we going to sing it though? Yeah, we'll do it now. Right, okay, here we go. Close up to full back in Lincolnshire There lived a woman, as I do hear Who being one of the devil's wicked band Laid a curse on houses, cattle and land So seeing women around them lie the people vowed that the witch must die And every night on the knees did loudly call May the Lord Jesus deliver us all Till there came riding a soldier bold And he the story was quickly told Black Jim his name and a man of noble deed and his bayard was the name of his steed. Then says the soldier, can quickly tell, I pray you, where does the demon dwell? He claws the spurs into Bayard's gallant side, and it straightway to the witch he did ride. Come out, he cried, oh, you hellborn dame, Come out, he cried in the good Lord's name. The devil's curse shall be taken from this land by the broad sword that do shine in my hand. Then like a demon she did appear, crying, who dares come so boldly here? With Satan's curses, the fields and meadows cry, and a bayard like a tiger, she sprang. The cruel claws from her fingers flash, and Bayard's blood on the ground was splashed. Then like a winged horse, she gave a mighty bound, and the old hag, she was dashed to the ground. Fast and twofold, where the news is spread, Rejoice, rejoice, for the demon's dead. But gallant Bayard upon the green grass lay, With his life blood quickly flowing away. Close unto full back in Lincolnshire, The marks of horseshoes are printed clear, And full back men to this day the men we keep, Gallant Bayard and the tale of his Good. Now this one, and I know Jackie will know this one because she's got the Joan Byers book. Um, Mary, it's Mary Hamilton, which is also known as the Four Marys, but, and it is a child ballad, but we don't really know, I believe, what she's actually, she's saying a farewell speech, but it's not known what the incident is. Unless some, maybe one of you people know some more details. So, the, <laughs> but anyway, here we go, Mary Hamilton. <laughs>
song I heard with him by thee. I poured him in, and tied me gold, and cast him out to sea. Selling crops, arables, and horses, and this is about a young man's visit to the fair. Yeah, because he got a great prize. No, he didn't. Did he? Okay, so let's cheer. So we we'll get on back. <laughs> Chance on me. 
So swing around the merry-go-round, give the wheel a fortune a while. For the finest prize a big and unfair is the pretty carnival girl. Her eyes are blue, her hair and whiskers. So swing around the merry-go-round, give the wheel a fortune a while. For the finest prize at Bacon and Fair is a pretty carnival girl. The old folks said she ain't for you once, but the old people say. But I took my chance and I won the girl. And I could away. And the very best day in all my life, whatever comes to pass. But today I went to Bacon and Fair and I won me a carnival last. So swing around the merry go round, give the wheel a fortune a while. For the finest prize at Bacon and Fair. It's a pretty carnival girl. The finest parties at Bacon and Fair. The pretty carnival girl. Kind of cheer for them. Look at you Um, This next one is The Road to Dorchester. And it's hard to put it succinctly what it's on about. So, well, Graham Moore wrote it, and um, he, there's a guy called George Lovelace who's set up a friendly society to get better paying conditions for the workers. I'm sure, well, I'm sure you lot know this a lot better. <laughs> anyway, but he was arrested, and he was made to walk seven miles to Dorchester Jail. And this is Graham Moore's take on what he would be thinking about as he headed to Dorchester jail. And when they did get to, one when when they did get to jail, they were sentenced transported to transported for yeah, well originally in eighteen thirty four, transported for two years after reprieve. And a petition that had been signed by something like eight hundred thousand people, which in those days was pretty amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's got the dates. Right, so here we go, road to Dorchester. <laughs> Hope the sound's okay, we haven't checked and maybe you can't hear anything, but that could be better. Who knows? <laughs> here we go. Spring man, we've read your story The child, the grief, the pain and the glory At the hands of the squire, the Whig and the Tory In England's pleasant land But if I could ask you one last question One last thought For your reflection, did you lose all hope? Pray for protection on the road to Dorchester
is um, what's parable of three maids. I'm handing over, I'm handing over. <laughs> <laughs> well, still, uh, it's uh, about uh, a tale that was attributed to Christopher Wren, but its roots are probably more in medieval time. It's about three stonemasons' attitudes to life, uh, which is highly applicable. The first is the short, uh, the one who works for his pay, sorry. The uh, second uses his talents to try and become the best, but the third is the visionary, and he's building the cathedral. And the starman is over. And is it Christopher Wren? Right, there you go. <laughs> he was right. a professor of astronomy at the time. Okay. <laughs>
but really she just wants to go out downtown and under the circumstances, I know how she feels now. <laughs> so although she's got everything, she kind of wants to just go downtown and have a night out. Shoes at the back of her waist, 
She praises good goblin and shoemaker's takes And home to her father she mournfully fakes For it was in the morning early Oh father, oh father, I got me a man And he is the one I would wed if I can As handsome as ever in leather did stand for the kiss in the morning early. The father was thinking and thinking again For to wed her to riches and have him for a kin Who knows, but it might be a prince or a king That she met in the morning early. Who knows, but it might be a jobber from town or a wealthy sea captain who sailed the world around A man with some thousands and thousands of pounds That you met in the morning early So the father was smiling, his daughter embraced And touching the buckles, he drew back in haste He spied the red shoes that were tied round her waist For it was in the morning early Oh daughter, oh daughter, he started to shout When he did discover what she was about God knows it was none but that old cobbling clown That you met in the morning early Very nice, And this is an Irish dement song which is actually a lament, a lament, yeah, that's quite good, I was dement lament. Alright, here we go. <laughs> when my morning comes around, no one else will be there. I wouldn't have to worry by what I'm supposed to say And I alone will know how you climb the great big mountain That's all that will matter when my morning comes around When my morning comes around I will look back on this path and these sidewalks and these valleys Where I lingered for so long And this place where I now live Will burn into ash and cinder Like some ghost I won't remember When my morning comes around When my morning all the new cup I'll be drinking And for once I won't be thinking There's something wrong with me And I'll wake up and find My faults have been forgiven That's when I start living Where my morning comes around So to finish off here, um, this is Dave Webber's parting song. So, and uh, not the parting song today. Perfect five. Here we go. <laughs> Oh, 